Shalom, all praises, honor, and glorification unto our power. Call Halam La Alahayana with Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Harakagwadash. Double honors unto the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Salutations as well as health and wellness unto the hopeful elect of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai scattered across the earth. This is your brother Allah coming to you with another lesson. And. Lord willing, this lesson will be entitled, Favor is Deceitful and Beauty is Vain. Don't be fooled by looks, brothers. It's more to it. And this uh, lesson will be dealing with the element of purpose. And uh, Lord willing, the elect of Yahweh Bashimi, I wish I'd be edified. So the first scripture that I want to get is, um, you know, uh, it contains part of that quote. Well, not quote part of that scripture within the title, right? And that's the beginning, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. And the rest is, but but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, we're in this hell hole, but we have to keep in mind the ordinances, if you will, of the Lord, right? You know, because brothers do what they do. You know, yeah, you may... Right, but because these women don't really contain uh, the 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 performance of walking in their purpose, because they don't why? Because they don't know what their purpose is. So brothers, you know, deal with women and whatever, whatever. You know, I don't want to get too much into that. I just want it to be plain and straight to the point. You know, I don't want to. You know, so yeah, you know. <clears throat> But you, you want to, we have to keep in mind, once again, the ordinances of the Lord, right? And uh, really, I was watching this video, and it was a guy, you know, you got guys out here that do the uh, the gold digger pranks or whatever, to test to see if a woman's a so-called gold digger. <clears throat> um, and uh, something that the guy said was uh he was telling his watchers or whatever um don't be fooled by what he said don't be don't be fooled by a pretty face and a, a fat ass you know so which I, I i was gonna put that but i changed it up a bit don't be fooled by looks brothers it's more to it because you know you two with their uh their sensitivity if you will, right, so, uh, <clears throat> this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, and verse 30, Faced, favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised, and a woman that fears the Lord understands her purpose, which, what's the purpose of a woman? To serve the man, the word woman means female servant, Right, as you see right here in the uh, the uh, Adam online, right, going into the definition, what do you see? You see plural wife, men, woman, female servant, and that's in the same that's so within the same quotations, right? So, woman meaning what female servant, and let's go to the blue letter. Which I didn't plan to do this, but let's just do it. Let me see what they say. But that's the meaning. The meaning of the word woman is female servant. Right? Uh, yep. Woman opposite of man. Married, female. Let's see if it says it right here. Uh, a woman, female, okay, let's do this, let's highlight that, boom, let's just see,
Hold tight. It probably won't say it in here, but look at this shit, fear of women, please. But um, yeah, Ed, I just wanted to see if they would bring it out in the blue letter. But this is the meaning, you know. Woman meaning what? Female servant. And who is the woman to serve? The man. Right? When you go into the order, right? Which this is a classic. This is the book of 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. And I want to make a point. Right? But I'm going to read it first. But I will have you know that the head of every man is the anointed, Yahweh Shai. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the anointed, Yahweh Shai, is the Most High. Which the Most High's name is Yahweh. Right? Meaning he is. And the Most High's son's name is Yahweh Shai. Meaning he delivers or he is the deliverer. Right? But. What do, what do we what do we know? We know that the purpose of man is to what? Serve the Lord. Right? Because the word man goes into uh, serving as well, if I'm not mistaken. But man is the servant to the Lord. The woman is the servant to the man. Right? So when you look at it, it says uh, that the head of every man is the anointed. Right? And what do the scriptures say? Oh, damn it. Ecclesiastes 12 and... Yeah. Uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Most High and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. But uh, sticking to the point, you know... We're to serve Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And you see, and the head of the woman is the man. So each, um, I don't know how to word it, but you should get what I'm saying, right? And the head of the woman is the man. So the woman, is to, her purpose is to serve the man. And the head of the anointed is the Most High, which our Lord Yahweh Shai did serve the Most High. When you, uh, you know, you see, but sticking to the point, which I'm not, you know, off point really, but, uh, the, once again, the purpose of the woman is to serve the man. And that includes her, uh, being an asset, right? Because there's no gray area in regards to an asset and a liability. It's either one or the other. Right, so the woman is to prove herself to you. Right? What is she proving? She's supposed to prove why she is equipped to be an asset and to uh, prove to you why you should take her under you as a, as a servant. You know? Because in this society... They got it all flipped upside down. What do the women ask you? They ask you, what can you bring to the table? Really, it's the other way around. And really, the woman is supposed to be asking. Right, what can I bring to your table, my Lord? Yes. <laughs> you know, that's how the ancient, that, that was the mentality of, uh, you know, I'll say, uh, well, that was the mentality of the, uh, mentality of the ancient women. Because they understood their purpose. Like when you read uh, in Second Maccabees, the seventh chapter, because what do you have nowadays? You have these these mothers or, or these moms, I'll say, that uh, where they say, they say, I brought you in this world and I'll take you out, right? I gave you life. No, you didn't. And the the um, the sister in the, the Second Maccabees, the seventh chapter, understood that because what? She actually said it. Let me see. I want to read that too. Right? Hold tight. Bear with me. Oh, 
Hold tight. Okay. I'll start at verse 20. This is the book of 2 Maccabees, the 7th chapter and the 20th verse. But the mother was marvelous above all and worthy of honorable mem memory. For when she saw her seven sons slain with the space of one day, she bare it with a good courage because of the hope that she had in the Lord. Right? And also, uh, they understood reincarnation. Right? Yes, yeah, she extorted every one of them in her own language. Her language is, was Hebrew, the Lashawan Kodash, right? The Holy Tongue, which is the Hebrew. Filled with courageous spirits because she was an Israelite and stirring up her womanish thoughts. I'm saying when it said uh, in her own language, her own language is Hebrew, right? And she was an Israelite. Filled with courageous spirits and stirring up her womanish thoughts with the manly stomach. She said unto them, I cannot tell how ye came into my womb, for I neither gave you breath nor life. Neither was I, neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you. So the ancient women understood that, right? They contained humility and submissiveness and femininity. And they contained the, the understanding of order. These days, hell no. <laughs> It's a whole different story. It's a whole different ball game, right? I cannot tell how you came into my womb, for I neither gave you breath nor life. Neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you. And what do you have? You have Mother's Day. That's idolatry, man. And so is Father's Day. That's not in the scriptures, you know? But doubtless the creator of the world who formed it, see that? So who, who who gave us life? But doubtless the creator of the world, right? Who formed the generation of man and found out the beginning of all things will also of his own mercy give you breath and life again, showing you what reincarnation, as ye now regard not your own selves for his law's sake, which uh, we have to do that same thing. We have to, what do, what do the scriptures say? They say, uh, Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Romans 12 and uh, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that you present yourselves, I'm sorry, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, meaning set apart, right, Quadash, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, and be ye transformed, I'm sorry, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that he may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh. You see, so, getting a little excited, you know, the spirit is flowing. The water Yahweh by Shemi Awashai. But um, the next scripture that I had planned to get out is the book of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Right, that's why you have the uh the hardcore affliction within the process of women giving birth right or women yeah you know and so it says uh un unto the woman he said i will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception and sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee now these uh this sorrow and, um within the process of conception that was greatly multiplied that was a curse but when it says that thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee that was a reminder because what did he do she stepped out of order right she stepped out of order the man is to lead the woman is to follow she didn't do that. She stepped into the role of leading. And now everything is fucked up. <laughs> and that's what the scriptures say. Right? Through the woman we all die. 
Let's read it in the Bible, man. Is that me saying it? No. Ecclesiasticus 25 and 24. And Adam stepped out of line too, though. He stepped out of order too because he followed the damn woman. You don't follow the damn woman. You lead the woman. She's the weaker vessel. She has to be led. She's not qualified uh, or equipped, rather, to lead. Right? Well, qualified too. You can say qualified. Qualified. And when you have to be qualified for a particular job, right? So this is, uh, let's see, this is, let's see. Hold tight. Okay. Ecclesiastic is 25 and 24. Hold tight. Of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. You see, so that's not just me saying it, that. That's within the word of the Lord. We just read it. Right, so that's the truth. It's facts, you know. I had another scripture up on my mind. Right, but yeah, that's what happened. Eve stepped out of order, and so did Adam. Even, uh, I believe even the Lord said that. Let me see. Hold tight. Yep, and when the woman saw... Right here. This is what the Lord said. Genesis 3 and 17, and to, unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, right, he, he followed the woman into, to, uh, into the intaking of that philosophy, because that's what it was, it wasn't a, a little apple, it wasn't a little fruit, right, that, that uh, when it says, uh, and she saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit. That fruit is, is symbolic, representing philosophy, right? You know, and you can read that chapter yourself, you know. Genesis, the third chapter, which I plan to do a breakdown. I, I believe it's either the fourth chapter of Genesis or the fifth chapter. You know, I have to go back and look at it, but I plan to do a breakdown on that. Lord willing, I'll do it uh, later on, to, well, you know, tonight or later on. So, uh, oh, Genesis 3 and 17, and unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. And hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. See? So the next scripture that I want to get is the book of Ecclesiastes, the 36th chapter and the 24th verse. And I want to make another point going into how the woman is to prove to the man why she's equipped to be an asset. Right? Explaining what things she can bring to his table. Right? The man is the provider, yes. Protector, yes. But the purpose of the woman is to serve the man. And if you don't like it, you can fuck off. Hops got your ass up out of here. You know? Ecclesiastes 36 and 24. He that getteth a wife beginneth the possession Right, because the wife, the woman, period. Well, I say when you get a wife, that's your possession. You see? Now, when you go and buy a pair of boots, because the woman is a possession, boots are a possession. If you buy you a water bottle, that's, well, 
a computer, that's a possession. It's your possession. It belongs to you. Right? You own it. So, but before purchasing it, purchasing it, what do you do? You sit, you look into it, right, to see if this thing is uh, equipped for your service, for your desires, with you know. So when you look at those boots, you look at the quality, right? You look at if it can, you know, different things, man. You should get what I'm saying, All right? So Ecclesiastic is 36 and uh, 24. He that getteth a wife beginneth for possession, a help like unto himself, a pillar of rest. And notice it said a help like unto himself, because the man is a help, or in other words, a servant as well, but not unto the woman. The man is a servant unto the Lord. Then the woman is the servant unto the man, and the children are to serve uh, uh, what the, the scriptures tell you. Will do service unto his parents. So it, this proves the order. You know, this, well, not proves, but it elaborates upon it, right? Because you have the Heavenly Father, you have Yahweh Shai, you have the man, you have the woman, and you have the children. Once again, you have the Heavenly Father, you have Yahweh Shai, you have the man, you have the woman, then you have the children, right? The children are to serve. The parents, right? Then the mother is to serve the man. The man is to serve Yahweh Shai. And when you read it, when you read, Yahweh Shai served his father, the Heavenly Father. Right? So this is Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And verse 7, right? Here's the point. He that feareth the Lord will honor his father. And will do service unto his parents as an, as to his masters. One that there is ser one that does service is a servant. Right? The word serve is in service. Which who serves? A servant. You see, so there you go. So, uh, get the book of Ecclesiasticus 9 and 8. Turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman. Not to say that you can't look at a woman, right? You find a woman attractive, you got to turn your head and not look at her. That's not what that's saying, right? You got to use wisdom, right? What is, don't let beauty cause you to fall. What the scriptures say that stumble not at the beauty of a woman. Right? So turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman and look not upon a, another's beauty. Yeah, you're not even to look at another man's woman. No. For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman, for herewith love is kindled as a fire. See that? Many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. Oh, and another thing in Proverbs, the 31st chapter in the 30th verse, what did it say? It said, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. Let's look up the definition of, a, of the word vain. Having or showing it. So lucky, you know. Vain, right? Here it is. Number two, producing no result, useless. Beauty is useless. Right? So, Lord willing, I'll end it with this. This is the book of First Edges, the first chapter in the 26 verses where I'll start. Yeah, many there be that have run out of their wits. The word wit goes into understanding. Right? Many there be that have run out of their wits for women and become servants for their sakes, which is out of order, out of course. Right? Not in accordance with the ordination, right? The order of the Lord. That's against the order. And become servants for their sakes. Many also have perished, have erred, and sinned for women.
No, I'm trying to find the scripture. Bear with me. It's in the book of uh, Ecclesiastes. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, the 33rd chapter, in the 19th verse. Give not thy son and wife, thy brother and friend, power over thee while thou livest. It said, many, uh, and many have become servants for their sakes. Becoming a servant will be given one power over you. Right? Or I'll say submitting unto one's power over you in some cases. Right. So give not thy son and wife, thy brother and friend, power over thee while thou livest. And give not thy goods to another, lest they repent thee and thou entreat for the same again. See? So don't give these women power over you, man. So, uh, that's pretty much the point. With that, Lord willing, you were edified. Once again and forever, all praises, honor, and glorification unto our power. Call Halayim La Alahayin Awa Yahawa, Bahashim, Yahawa Shai, Bahashim, Harakakwadash. Double honors unto the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Salutations as well as health and wellness unto the hopeful elect. Of Yahweh by Shimi, I wish I scattered across the earth. See you in the next lesson, Lord willing. Why Yahweh by Shimi, I wish I, Baba Kasha, Baba Ba, Wa, Shalom, DTA soon.